inshallah in these nights, instead of playing Fortnite, you will pray midnight inshallah. <laughs>
And that is playing video games, my dear brothers and sisters. Yes, video games. Fortnite, GTA, you know, these days the whole world is going crazy about Fortnite, right? People are addicted to it. Do you know that the average age of people who play video games regularly is what? 10? 12? 15? No. What do you think is it? 35. Yes, that's the average age. We're talking about adults. 62% of those between the ages of 18 to 29, they regularly play video games. And 53% of those between the ages of 30 and 49 are constantly playing video games. 155 million Americans regularly play video games. And every single year, do you know how much money they spend on video games? 22 billion dollars. <coughs> Not million, billion. 22 billion dollars. Can you just imagine? There are people who really are just addicted. They're so addicted to these video games. Some people on average play 12 to 20 hours of week, a week video games. <coughs> now I'm not saying that it's wrong to play, it's okay every once in a while. If you are using it moderately, that's fine. But to be addicted to it, that has so many consequences on our lives. Many, many people in our own communities, even some fathers, some husbands, they're so irresponsible. Once this sister, she came complaining, she said, my husband doesn't work, I work. And the reason is every single night, he gets with his friends, they get together, and they play video games till the morning. That's a salat al layl and ibadah and tahajjud, unfortunately. Many people are suffering from this. Use the month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, to break from this habit. Control it. And if you're the type of person who if you play, you're going to get addicted to playing, don't play. Believe me, playing these video games is not going to add anything to your life. It's not going to make the quality of your life any better. Many people are suffering from this. The month of Ramadan is the perfect time to break from this habit, my dear brothers and sisters. So, inshallah, in these nights, instead of playing Fortnite, you will pray midnight, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The fourth habit that is a big problem for many people, especially those who grow older, is harboring old time resentments, grudges. You know there are people, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, an incident happened with someone, and until now they fume and rage over it. They have that resentment and these grudges against those people. These people are really just ruining their own lives. If you hold a grudge against someone, is that going to make your life any better? Is it going to make that person who you hate any worse? Absolutely not. You know, as the saying goes, it's like drinking the poison yourself and then hoping for someone else to die. That's not going to happen. You take the poison, you're going to kill yourself. There are many people who have resentment and grudges. And that leads to many types of diseases. By the way, one of the causes of cancer is to have grudges against people. Can you imagine that? Having these constant resentments and grudges against people, carrying that hate towards people, that actually leads to cancer. This is the month of forgiveness, brothers and sisters. Allow your heart to forgive other people. Even if someone wronged you five years ago, ten years ago, and you still haven't gotten over it, this is the month to allow you to get over it. This is the opportunity. Don't we seek the forgiveness of God? We've all done bad things in our lives. If we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat us like we treat other people, then Allah should not forgive us for any of our sins. But we expect Allah to let go. Oh Allah, forgive me for all the sins that I've committed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, okay, you also let go of your grudges and resentments. And believe me, you're the first person to benefit when you forgive others. When you let those grudges go, that night you will sleep better. I guarantee you. It's like something has been lifted from your chest. A huge burden has been lifted from you. 
So that is a fourth habit that we will work on. And finally, the fifth habit, which is a very important one, and that is excessive complaining. Brothers and sisters, I know we all love to complain, right? When something is bad happening to you, you're stressed out, somebody said something to you, you rush to someone to complain. And it feels good, let's face it. When you complain, it really does feel good. Temporarily, it feels good, just like a drug. But in the long term, do you know what it does? Studies have revealed people who have the habit of complaining, initially they feel good about it because they're venting. But then over time, they prime and train their brain to focus on that which is negative. By constantly complaining, you're training your brain to be concerned with the negative side of your life. And the brain will shift away from the positive in your life. That's one of the negative effects of complaining. That's why the religion of Islam teaches us, try as much as you can not to complain. Yes, if you are there to complain, to seek advice, that's fine. You go to someone who's wise, a fellow brother or sister, and you tell them about some problems that you're having, but not just to vent. That's not your goal. But the goal is to what? to seek their advice, to learn something from them, to have them help you find yourself out of the situation, that is fine. But just to complain for the sake of complaining, that actually ends up making you feel worse. It tricks your brain into thinking that you've done something actually about it, when in reality nothing has happened. All you've done is just complain. And then, without even noticing it, you will be focused on the dark side of your life on your problems, whenever you're focused on your problems that impedes you from progressing, from moving forward. So one habit that we will work on, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan, is to stop the habit of complaining. Only complain to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَصَبْرٌ jamil, As Prophet Ya'qub stated, beautiful patience. What is beautiful patience? To complain, only to the Almighty God. Because when you complain to Allah, Allah is the source of hope. Allah is the source of everything positive in the universe. When you complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're actually resorting to your Creator who can help you, who can lift you from your situation. And that generates hope in your hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran that He has prescribed fasting on us to achieve piety, brothers and sisters. And it's impossible to be truly pious without working on your akhlaq, on your personality traits, on your habits. I tell you the biggest impediment that stops us from being pious is our bad habits. If we can control bad habits in our lives, especially in the month of Ramadan, then this will pave the way for us to be pious by the will of Allah.